This is a production of PBS Charlotte. The following episode of Charlotte Cooks is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Hi there, and welcome to this edition of Charlotte Cooks. Today, we are going to demystify one of the most popular cookie recipes on the planet, chocolate chip cookies. Have you ever made the intention of making a chocolate chip cookie to have them turn out like this, thin and crispy, when you wanted them to turn out like this, plump and cakey? Or have they turned out plump and cakey when you wanted them to turn out soft and chewy. Well, actually, there is a reason why each of these cookies turn out the way they do. And it has everything to do with your ingredients. So let's take a look at the different ingredients involved in each of these different setups. So in the thin and crispy recipe, your basic recipe is gonna include flour, eggs, chocolate chips, of course, vanilla, salt, baking powder, baking soda, and then here's the deciding factor on the spreading factor of these cookies. It has everything to do with the butter and the amount of sugar that you're using. In this setup here, this is the amount of butter that you would use to make your thin and crispy cookie. You're going to use two and a half sticks of butter. That's the most butter that you use in any one of these recipes. And when you use the butter, what happens then is it increases the spread of the cookie. The cookie's just going to go and spread all over the place. And I'm sure you've done this before where you've scooped the cookies out, baked them in the oven, and it comes out like a great big uni cookie. And you've got to cut it up. Okay? And that has everything to do with the amount of butter that you're using in this recipe. To make them soft and chewy like these in the center, you're going to use two sticks of butter as opposed to two and a half sticks of butter. And to make them cakey, you're going to use even less. You're going to be using one and three quarter sticks of butter. Now let's go over the sugar part. On the thin and crispy cookies, we are going to be using three quarters of a cup of brown sugar versus one cup for the soft and chewy cookies. So we're going up in sugar here in the brown sugar. And our cake cookies actually have only a quarter cup of sugar in there as well. Then we're going to use our granulated sugar. Our granulated sugar in our thin and crispy cookies has one and a half cups. We have one half cup here in our soft and chewy cookies. And in our cakey cookies, we're going to have three quarters of a cup of sugar. So these are the things that are going to indicate how your basic cookie is going to turn out. Now here's another thing you need to realize. The quality of your ingredients. If you use cheap everything across the board, your cookies are going to turn out tasting cheap like everything across the board. European butters have a very high butter fat content in them, much more than the American domestic butters, and it gives you a nicer mouth feel when you eat the cookie. European butters are great for making cookies, and so if you can afford to buy the European butter, go ahead and do that. If you can use farm fresh eggs, it makes a big difference. If you can use organic sugars, it makes a difference. Can you leave the sugars out and use something like maple syrup or honey? No, not really, because that's, that's considered liquid and it's going to make your cookies just run into a very, very big mess. And so you're really not going to need that at all. Just give it up and use butter and real sugar and real eggs and buy the best ingredients that you can. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is how are we going to get ready to bake our cookies? You notice on my trays here, everything is measured out and ready to go. And that's what you need to do too when you're at home. Reason being is this is what professional chefs do. It's called mise en place, okay? Put all of your ingredients, all of the things you need in one place so that when you're ready to go with the mixing, you don't have to go run and find your eggs. You don't have to measure out your sugar. You don't have to go get your flour and your baking powder, your baking soda, your salt, whatever. It's all right there and you're ready to go. So you can pretend you're a professional chef at home as well by measuring out your ingredients. Stick your dishes in the dishwasher. It's okay. So what we're going to do today is we are going to mix up 
our soft and chewy cookie so that you guys can see the mixing technique. Sometimes your cookie recipes will call for you to cut the butter in with a couple of knives or a pastry cutter into the flour. Sometimes you'll cream the sugar and the butters together before you add your eggs and then your dry ingredients. What's really, really important here is that technique that you use to combine. And this type of cookie can be considered a drop cookie. We're going to use our butter, our fat, and we're going to combine that with our sugar. So here we go. We're going to clean this up now and we're going to come and we're going to grab these soft and chewy ingredients and we're going to move over to our mixer and we're going to start mixing these cookies. One of the first things you're going to do is you're going to take your flour, your dry ingredients, and you're going to put it in a sifter. So we're going to just take it and drop it into the sifter and I like putting it into a bowl. You can also do this over a piece of parchment paper if you wanted. Take your salt and your baking soda and drop those in there as well and go ahead and sift this through. Now what does this do? This adds a little bit of air to the flour. It just takes all the lumps out so that you're left with just a nice soft sifted flour. Right? I love the sound this thing makes. It's just a good old fashioned sound. There's all kinds of different sifters out there. You can get them where you squeeze the handles and whatnot, but you know, this is an old fashioned one and just has been around a long time. Makes a great little sound, doesn't it? All right. So now we have our salt, our baking soda, and our flour all sifted together. No lumps, no bumps, we're ready to go. So we're going to put this over here by the mixer. So in our mixer, actually I'm going to put it right back over here because I can reach it. In our mixer, I'm going to take our butter. Now remember, this butter is for the soft and chewy cookies, so it's only two sticks of butter. Cut it up into small pieces. Make sure your butter is at room temperature because that's going to make a difference as to how well and how easily it mixes with the sugars. Okay? So next we're going to take our brown sugar. Our brown sugar is one cup of brown sugar. Now when you measure brown sugar, y'all, I'm sure you know this, but I'm going to show you anyway. And I'm just going to show you on a small cup. You don't just take brown sugar and put it in the measuring cup like this. That just does not give you an accurate measure. For brown sugar, you've got to pack it in, okay? So we're going to take that and we're going to take it and we're going to pack it in so it's nice and hard like this. And that's how you measure brown sugar. You want to make sure that it's all the way to the edge and all the way to the top and pack it in good and tight so that it holds its shape. And so we want to do that for one cup, okay? So this has already been done. So. Our mise has been put together, our brown sugar, and our white sugar. And once again, if you use a nice organic sugar, you can use a coconut sugar. It works just fine for your granulated. It works really lovely. I'm going to raise up my bowl. Now here's the secret, folks. When you're combining these things, you're not going to whip them together until they get the size of mountains. We're not going to turn this on and walk away and go have a phone call or go watch a soap opera or go play a game on your computer. You're going to stay here and you're going to watch this until these things are just combined. Okay? That is one mistake that people make is they put a lot of air into the cookie at this point and then they spread and they run all over the, the sheet pan. So we're going to turn this on slowly and we are going to... Mix these together until it's just mixed, okay? So here we go. Halfway through, turn it off and take your spatula and scrape it on down. You want to make sure that there's nothing stuck on the bottom of the pot. If something is dried left down there, you don't want that to happen. So I'm going to turn it back on and this is almost there. All right just until it's mixed together. Next, I'm going to add my eggs. I've got two eggs here. I went ahead and cracked them so I don't have to crack them and put them in. Risk getting shells in there. You don't want shells in your cookies. So we're going to turn these on low speed. Add one egg. Bloop. Let it get incorporated. And turn that up just a little bit. There we go. Add another egg. Bloop. Just like that. And let that get incorporated. Turn your speed up just a little bit. And next we're going to add our vanilla. Let's take your vanilla and drizzle it in down the side so it doesn't splatter all over you. Take your spatula. Once again, you're going to scrape down the sides and make sure everything is 
all mixed in and we don't have anything stuck to the bottom or stuck to the sides that is not getting mixed in. Okay, mix it up again. All right, now we're ready for our dry ingredients. Our dry ingredients, once again, we sifted them. Now this is one where you have to kind of be careful because if you put this in on high speed, medium speed, your flour is going to come out and you're going to look like you're a snowman because you're going to be wearing all your flour. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this flour and drop it in here. Now this is something else you have to be very aware of. When you make bread, you want to work your flour a lot to stretch that gluten, to get that stuff developed so that the bread will rise and hold all these things inside. We don't want that with our cookies because what that does is it makes our cookies tough. And so we just want to go ahead and mix this once again just until the flour is incorporated. Get that in there, mix it all together and bring it to where it's all mixed up. Now, our base cookie dough, it does look like this. And for our chocolate chips, I'll show you what else we're going to put in here in just a moment. For, for chocolate chips, now we're going to take 12 ounces, which is about one bag of chocolate chips, dump them all in there, and just bring this together. Just bring it together. That wasn't even 10 seconds. Lower it down, and there you go. We are ready to go with our chocolate chip cookies. Hold on a minute, I'm going to show you what this looks like. Now, how many of you have made cookies while you're growing up and mom says, who wants to lick the beater? That's always the fun part. But you know what, guys? If you come through this and you scrape it off carefully and you scrape down your bowl carefully, you could get an entire another cookie out of this. But if you want to lick it, go ahead. All right, so now we have all of our cookie dough ready to rock and roll. So now what we're going to do is we're going to dish our cookies out onto the sheet pan. So one of the things we need is a parchment lined sheet pan. And I like these heavy duty sheet pans here because they're, they're, they're heavy duty and they're, they're going to evenly bake the bottom of your cookies. I also like using parchment paper on the bottom of my sheet pans as opposed to just spraying down the sheet pan. When you're buying your sheet pans, you want to make sure you're getting a sheet pan that's not really super thin because that has a tendency to burn your cookies. And you can get those ins air insulated uh, sheet pans that have that little pillow of air in between them. Those are great. They don't burn the bottom of your cookies, but they take a little bit longer to actually cook when you use those. You can also find cookie pans that don't have any lips on the side of them. And the only thing I don't like about those is because the cookies slip and they're designed to slip off of that kind of a sheet pan. But these are standard, you can find these everywhere, they're not expensive, and you're going to be amazed at how often you use these kinds of sheet pans in your home kitchen. So the other thing that we're going to be looking at is how are we going to dish these cookies out so they're all the same size. Well one of the secrets you can use is a scoop, like an ice cream scoop or a dishing scoop or something like this that is really wonderful. It has a little, little flip on the side that gets the dough out really easily. This is much more accurate than using two spoons to do it with, which is what my mom always did. I'm going to make these medium size. You can make big cookies, you can make little cookies, you can make medium sized cookies. It all depends on how big the opening is to your cookie jar as to how big your cookies are going to be. I'm going to take my scoop and I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to flatten it against the side of the bowl. And I'm going to pace these up and down the sheet pan so that I have three across and three down. Now if I was making big cookies, I'd probably just do two across and maybe three down. It depends on how large your cookies are. If you have no idea how much spread you're going to be getting on your cookie, you can put one scoop on a piece of parchment paper, put it in the oven, and see how much it spreads. Because sometimes, like I said, you don't want to put these in the oven and have them all turn into one big cookie. I call it the uni cookie. You don't really want the unit cookie. You want to have a cookie that is uniform in shape and size. And the biggest reward for that is that they are all going to cook at the same rate. So you don't have to fish off the big ones. You don't have to fish off the little ones. You can just keep on going. So on this sheet pan, I should be able to get about a dozen cookies. 
So while you're doing this, if you find that your cookie dough is sticking in your little scoop here and it's not coming out, you can always dip this in a little bit of water and it comes right out. Okay? So now we've got cookies ready to go in the oven. Now here's one more thing you can do. Oh my gosh, chocolate chip cookies with a little bit of salt on top of them. Chocolate and salt, oh my gosh, it's like the sweet, salty, ultimate, whatever. It's the best. So I want to show you a salt that I use. I use this salt. It's a Malden salt. And Malden salt is a type of sea salt. But the beautiful part of this is that it has, oh, this is a huge flake. We're not going to use that one. But look at this, right here on the tip of my finger. <laughs> that beautiful pyramid shape this salt makes. It's incredible. And so what I like about this salt is that it's very thin and very crispy little flakes. And it's like to die for awesome on top of chocolate chip cookies. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of this gorgeous pyramid shaped salt and I'm going to sprinkle it. There, put that pyramid right on top there. A little bit, just not a lot, right on top of each cookie. And what happens now is that as these cook, the cookies will spread and the salt will stay on top, kind of like a decorative sugar. But when people eat these, they're going to be slapping the table and going, oh my goodness, these are the best chocolate chip cookies I've ever had, just because you added a little bit of salt to them. It's really quite amazing. Okay, so now these are going to go into the oven. What type of oven do we use to bake cookies? 350 degrees because that is a moderate oven. You don't want a fan on them. You don't want anything. No convection, no fancy bells and whistles. Just stick them in the oven, 350 degrees. Now, let me put them in the oven. I'll tell you something. When you're looking at your recipes, your recipes are going to say 8 to 10 minutes, 8 to 12 minutes, whatever. You always want to check that at the lowest time. So when it says 8 to 12 minutes, don't say, oh, set the timer for 12 and walk away. Set the timer for 8 minutes and come back and check them. And when they're done, you're going to take them out and you're going to let them cool on the cookie sheet. And I have some down here that are done. I'm going to pull them out so they can cool down just a little bit. These are only six on the surface. I'm going to let them cool down just a little bit. I'm going to show you how we're going to finish these. This happens to be white chocolate and macadamia with some dried cranberries in there. So we want to put a little bit extra on the top of this. So I'm going to let these cool down. When they first come out of the oven, you don't want to take them off the sheet pan right away. If you've ever tried doing that, what happens is you've noticed the middle of the cookie seems to stay behind, or it rolls up, or it gets all gummy, or it's just not right. And that's because the cookie is still pretty darn soft and it hasn't set up yet, okay? So we're going to let it sit here for two or three minutes, and we're going to let it set up. If you want your cookies to be really crispy, leave them on the rack to cool. If you want them to be soft and chewy like we want these, we're going to take them and we're going to put them on a cooling rack after they have set. But I'm going to show you something else before we do this. Get back on there. So I told you about doing the chocolate chip. I also have this concoction that doesn't have any chocolate chips in it. And we're going to do something different with these. So I'm going to put this. Remember, you can get your cookies all the way to this stage and then we're going to add something different to them if you wanted to make a different kind of cookie. What are we going to make? Come on up here and let me show you what we can do. We can do dried cranberries. We can do white chocolate chips. You can do macadamia. We can do pistachio. We can do almonds. We can do pecans. We can do cherries. And we can even do toffee brittle bits. So what am I going to make with this one? I'm going to go with the dried cranberries and the pistachio because they're colorful and they look nice and it's going to be delicious. So here we go. I'm going to throw my nuts in here, a few of my nuts, and I'm going to throw some of my cranberries in here. And once again, just bring it together, okay? Lift my bowl up, just bring it together. I think I'm going to add a couple more pistachios to this because I like pistachios. Don't like pistachios? Pretty good. Just bring it together, lower it down, and now these cookies are also ready to go. Look at this. Already, it's colorful. You got the green and the red. Push it through. 
And this is the only thing you have to do to make them a little bit different, is just choose a different nut, maybe a different fruit. Could you add, geez, you can just add just about anything to them. You can go up, could you add M&Ms to these? Yeah, you could add M&Ms. That would be a good addition too. Uh, but you have to remember that if you choose M&Ms to go in something like this, M&Ms are sweet, and so you may want to cut back a little bit on your sugar so your cookie isn't overly sweet. On these, I'm just going to make a couple of small, small cookies. I want these to be smaller, but once again, I'm not going to make them any more than three across just because it makes it easy to count. And you can count a dozen very easily by counting your sheet pans. So if you just put a dozen on your sheet pan, how many dozen cookies do you have in there? Well, I got four pans, so I have four dozen. You don't even have to do math. You just know. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and dish these out, and then we're going to get busy with another type of finishing for the cookie. Our cookies have cooled, and I've left them on the sheet pan for a reason. And the reason is, is because what we're going to do is we're going to put a white vanilla fondant over the top of this. It's a drizzle. You guys have seen the drizzle that go on top of donuts, and you've, you guys have all had it before, and you probably haven't even given it much of a thought, but it's so easy to make, and it adds such a pretty, pretty, pretty finishing quality to the cookie. I'm going to show you how to do it. There's a lot of ways of doing it. So here we've got the cookies that we're going to put the drizzle on, and I leave them on the parchment so that we can just clean them up and you don't have to worry about cleaning the, the fondant off of your countertop when you're done. So what I'm going to use for this is simple. I have some confectioner sugar, and I have some milk, and I have some vanilla. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tiny bit of vanilla to this, not a lot. Now one thing I have to caution you about is if you go adding a whole bunch of milk to this all at once, you're going to have to go buy pounds and pounds and pounds of the sugar in order to make it the consistency you want. So I highly suggest that you don't use a whole lot of liquid to begin with, okay? Because you can see this right now is it's not getting very liquid, but watch what happens when I add this milk. I'm going to add a little bit at a time. I can always add more milk. And it's just easier to add milk slowly than it is just to go find more sugar. Because I have been in the predicament before where I just ran out of 10x sugar and I had nothing else to do with my little fondant because it was just too thin. Your vanilla will actually give you a little golden hue to the fondant and that's okay. If you wanted to use vanilla bean in here, you could and that would give it a little bit of a fleck. A little bit of a vanilla, vanilla bean fleck in there. You guys have seen that before. Think of vanilla bean ice cream, okay? See how that's all come together now? You just mix it up just like this. You want this consistency. You want it to pour, okay? You want it to pour like that, all right? Now, something else. If you make this up while your cookies are in the oven and you let it sit, it's going to get a little hard crust on the top, but all you have to do is just stir it back up again. Okay, so this is what you do. You get it to where it's pouring, and I just like to get a whole bunch of it and then just drizzle it right over your cookies. Get off, come on, get off, there we go. You can do it in a pattern. You could do it as a blop. And this is why we do it on the sheet pan with the parchment, because then we don't have to worry about the big blops that make it onto the parchment instead of on the counter or on the table or anything like that. So we're just going to drizzle them. And if you wanted to do it in a nice pattern, I just like to go random, kind of Jackson Pollock-like, you know. That's my ode to modern art. Here we are. Let's do some Jackson Pollock on these. Rawr, here we go. Slap, slap, slap. There we go. Da -da 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 -da. Sometimes this is my favorite part. I've been known to pick up little pieces of dried fondant off the parchment before. And nibble on it. Okay. So now what we can do with these is we can take these and we can put them, once this fondant dries, it takes about a half an hour for the fondant to dry. You can move it beforehand, but just be careful because when the fondant is wet, it smears and goes everywhere. So I'm going to put these off to the side. Let me show you some cookies I have done. Here we have some of our cookies. These are white chocolate macadamia nut with that wonderful vanilla frosting. We have some of our cake-like cookies. And these have a trace of salt added to them. Get back in the middle there, guys. We also have <laughs> cookie fest today. We have our thin and crispy cookies. 
And if you guys didn't like those kind of, some people love those kind of cookies, and if you didn't like those, could you crumble those up and use those as something else? Yeah, because there's nothing wrong with the ingredients in those. And here we are with our soft and chewy cookies. So remember, when you're making your chocolate chip cookies, if your cookies turn out thin and crispy like this, and you'd rather have them a little bit more soft and chewy, it has everything to do with the amount of sugar and the amount of butter that you're putting into your cookie. So experiment a little bit. Get out there and try just a little less butter, maybe a little less of the sugar. It's going to make a difference in the spread of the cookie and whether they turn out cake-like or whether they turn out soft and chewy or whether they turn out thin and crispy. Nonetheless, they're going to be delicious. So try these techniques, very simple techniques for mixing, very simple techniques for the ingredients coming together. Get the best things you can so your cookies are going to be simply outrageous. Thank you for watching this episode of Charlotte Cooks. I hope you get baking soon. You can catch our recipes on our website at pbscharlotte.org. And if you really want to drop me a note, pamela.roberts at cpcc.edu is the email and best way to reach me. Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching this time, and we'll catch you again on another episode of Charlotte Cooks. of PBS Charlotte.